Question, multiple choice. What is the first thing to do before sexting? A, hide your identity, like in pics. B, get consent, or C, exchange names? The answer is B, get consent. Hi, I'm Samantha Biddy, sexual health and consent educator, and in this episode of Sexy Sexual Health Education, we're gonna talk about safer sexting. I made an interesting editing choice with this hair, but let's see what happens. Let's start with the definition. Sexting, I think, would be any form of communication via text or video, voice note, email that is sexy. The way most people imagine sexting, it's, you know, on your phone, on an app, that sort of thing. Somebody you're flirting with, somebody you maybe want to get down with. A lot of us have been in quarantine, so I think there's been a lot more sexting going on. What this video wants to talk about are some of the considerations when sexting to make it as safe and as pleasurable for everyone involved as possible. I've actually talked about safer sexting before in my video column, Bitty Bits. I'm gonna include some clips from that video because I've already articulated it so beautifully and so perfectly. You may as well enjoy that. The main takeaway from that video is there are three C's to consider, which are consent, communicate, and conceal. Get consent. You're going to want to make sure that the person on the other end of that nude or that sex is anticipating receiving that explicit content. Not only do you want to make sure they're not opening it in a place that makes either you uncomfortable or them uncomfortable, it also ensures that they're receiving it in a place that is like enthusiastic, that they're not going to experience that that pic or that video or whatever in a harassing way. And communicate what your privacy concerns are, set your expectations for the lifespan of your nudes for before, during, and after, and conceal. Conceal your face, conceal tattoos, conceal your pets. I don't know who's in your nudes, but uh Oh, and make sure you're comfortable. Everything that we talk about in this video is under the umbrella of the three C's. An important note about consent is age, age of consent, whether that's you or the person that you're sexting with. If you're under 18 and you're sending nudes, there can be some like icky law stuff around age of consent and distribution. And concealed is the decisions that you make around what aspects of your self identity, your physical self or personal things, your name, your location that you may or may not wish to disclose. But let's talk about the fun, sexy part. You yourself have made the decision, you know what, I'm in the mood. I wanna do some sexting. Whether it's because you're on lockdown or it's because you just enjoy sending pics or sexy texts, what are some of the things that we need to think about? Practicing self-awareness in a sexting scenario would be asking yourself certain questions like, what are my boundaries? What are my limitations? Knowing your boundaries before you even enter into a sexting situation is going to help you to communicate and ultimately have a more pleasurable experience. Hard boundaries are the things that you know about yourself and you know your level of comfort with. You're like, nope, nah, not going to, doesn't matter, I already know. Soft boundaries are the ones that get to be revealed to you through the experience of another person. Like, ah, oh, this mood has welcomed me into an openness about a certain type of talk or play or pick. Another useful question to ask yourself is, what am I seeking? What am I looking for by participating in this relationship? Am I looking for validation? Am I horny? Am I trying to get off? Am I trying to get pics from somebody else because I wanna see them? Knowing what you're seeking is going to help you to identify whether you're having a fulfilling or satisfying experience. It can also help you to reflect on whatever it is I need. Can I get these needs met elsewhere? Asking some of those questions is going to help you to ultimately trust yourself. When you can trust yourself, that can translate into the ability to trust others. When it comes to sex, 
trust equals pleasure. Sexting is an exchange. We want to remember that there's somebody on the other end of that. I mean, certainly if they're sending you pictures of their junk, you're well aware there's someone on the other end of that. But on the other end of that is a whole person with feelings, thoughts, fantasies, emotions, a life that is equal to yours. So you want to make sure that you are seeing others as whole when we enter into any kinds of relationships, not least of which sexy conversations type relationships. I think practicing empathy helps us to avoid falling into the very common trap with sex, which is being in a performance versus being in an experience. A lot of the places that we learn about sex or how to have sex, especially based on gender or the types of sex you have, there is often this performance kind of aspect. Like I have to perform in a certain way in order to be good at sex or a good lover. It's also very often rooted in our physical body and like very specific types of bodies that are viewed as sexy and sexual. But I want to invite you that while you're imagining others as whole, you're imagining yourself as whole, that that's not just rooted in your physical body. Sexual pleasure is emotional and spiritual and intellectual, you can employ all those different things when you're sexting. Sometimes the distance or the anonymity or the having a screen in between you can make it harder to really sense and feel what someone else is sensing and feeling, which makes it that much more important to pay attention. Some of making sexting more pleasurable is a bit of that social skills aspect. How am I responding to somebody or something that they say? Am I mirroring the language that they use? Am I sharing with them the language that I prefer? It can be as simple as using your language versus that language. Like for example, your ass versus that ass. Your allows people to feel embodied and to feel present even when we're like apart. And if you're not sure, just ask, what type of words do you use for that particular body part? What do you like to see when you get a sexy pic? Never assume that somebody wants the like, full frontal, sometimes it's like lips or eyes or fingers or I don't know. I it could like like I said, it could be anything. Practice compassion. Sexting, even though happening virtually, is still about a connection. We want to check in with each other. Even if you're mid horny, hot, wet sexting, how are you feeling? And I always want to encourage people to normalize following up. Hey, how did you feel about that? Or did you have a nice time? Or what did you like about it? Or what didn't you like? Be open to receiving that feedback in a really neutral way. We can't talk about sex without talking about rejection. It's possible you could even be mid-sexting and someone is like, eh, you know what, I'm not in. Or they just stop responding or Maybe you yourself during your follow-up are like, you know what, to be honest, it was a nice time, but I don't think I wanna do it again. All of that is okay. Relationships are about compatibility. They're about timing. They're about so many things that aren't even necessarily personal, or maybe it is. Maybe something was a red flag and you're like, you know what, I'm not trying to do all of that with this person again. All of that is okay. A few additional considerations. Sexting with someone does not consent to or guarantee having sex IRL. You could sext with someone for years and never be entitled to having sex with them or be obligated to meeting up in person. No means no. If you've entered into a sexy conversation with someone and you've asked them for something and they've said no or they've stopped communicating with you, no means no. Anything beyond accepting no means no is harassment. Don't show anyone things that people have sent you. People are entitled to their privacy even if they haven't negotiated it in advance. So let's say you had a horny evening and you're like, oh, I didn't tell that person not to show anyone. You can always follow up and be like, hey, by the way, anything we talked about stays between us. Let's say that someone is harassing you or someone has publicized or shared something that you sent them, whether that's a pic or a screenshot of a conversation. I know that can be really gross and really icky. It can be embarrassing. It can be scary, but it can be really helpful if you tell someone. There might be a 
chain of events that can happen that can hold that person accountable. And of course, of course, of course, anytime someone is harassing you or if someone has harassed you, it's not your fault. There's nothing innately bad or shameful or wrong about being sexual. It is the society outside of us that is full of sex shame and misogyny and toxic masculinity and all the things that tell us that our body should look a certain way or that we shouldn't use our bodies or our minds or our words in certain ways to experience pleasure, consensual pleasure. Sexting, like all sex, is about risk negotiation. We take information to the best of our ability into our consideration and we make decisions. If people have misled us or mistreated us, that's not our fault. So again, I invite you to be loving with yourself, self-aware, empathetic, and to practice all the same social skills you have in almost every other aspect of your day-to-day -day life. That concludes this episode of Sexy Sexual Health Education. Until next time, happy, safer sexting. Or not. You don't have to do it.